Episode 10, let's kick things off with a women's number one contendership match. It's coming in first is Madison Ace, a new signing. She wasn't signed in time for the Royal Rumble. So here she is tonight. God damn it, she's gonna blow the pyro budget again. Why is everyone why is everyone so determined to blow the damn pyro budget? I don't get it. What is it with everyone in Blowing the damn pyro budget. And her opponent. Someone who did really, really well. In the women's Royal Rumble. Lost it to the final three. Melissa Berg. Who was eliminated by Shayna Torres, who isn't actually Shayna Torres. We'll work on that storyline next week. Uh, Shane Torres has said that he is actually going to challenge this imposter. He's got his sister, and she is actually going to fight this imposter. But uh, let's get this match up on the way. Madison Ace versus Melissa Berg. Let's go. Already a big shoulder tackle. We got some uh, good matches coming up for you this week. We have this. We have two Elimination Chamber qualifying matches. Uh, we also have Candy Vega taking on Tony Taylor. I'll explain more about what that match is about when we get their nice takedown there from Melissa. As now. Oh. Missing, but nice takedown again. Elbow to the... Elbow? Bro, I'm botching here. Knee to the face there. Irish whip. And now, reversal from Madison Ace. Madison with the height advantage. And now... Oh, wait! Working on the arm. The winner of this match will go on to fight Kyrie Sampson at lockdown. Ooh, again just taking just taking Madison Ace down. And now big time Uranagi. Cover one. Two ooh, kick out of one. Uh, this show promises to be one hell of a show. At least I hope so. Ooh! Knees into the corner. Motorbike in the arena. Big takedown from Melissa Berger now. Uppercut from Madison Ace. Into the corner. Ooh! Mi again misses the knee strike. And now, big time suplex. Now Melissa Berg looking for something. Oh, doesn't get it. Big takedown there. And a big takedown from Addison Ace. You know, win or, win or lose, both of these women here have a chance to prove suplex. It's now Mads, Madison Ace trying to get some offense going. Pump handle slam. Madison Ace styling in the corner. This isn't a wise strategy, you have a chance. Oh, missed the basement drop kick. 
big time Uranagi. One. Ooh, but a kick out of one again. Also, we never truly found out who wrote the note. Who wrote the contract saying that, oh, misses the running knee strike. But again, we never found out who wrote the contract saying that if Samantha or Kyrie lost, then they would be you know, fired from CW. Because I should have told him about that. Oh, Mr. Clothesline. Big takedown. Big time clothesline. Gotta be getting this offense going. Looking for something big here. Running, running knee strike. Cover. One, two, three. And Melissa Berg will be going to lockdown to fight Kyrie Sampson in just a couple weeks time actually. I think it's safe to say that the road to CW Mania has truly begun. This could be Melissa Berg's moment to get herself onto that road. Elimination Chamber qualifier match here. Coming in first is the returning Blake Payne. He's finally been cleared. Doctors literally cleared him the day after royally rumbled he's 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 not very happy about that but he appears to have a new manager in uh, Elizabeth Baker is this gonna pay dividend to him all oh, the fans are still behind him this new look though. Sounds like Eli uh, offering him words of encouragement. Blake Payne looks happy to be back, but he looks like he's a lot more serious than he's ever been. I think it's safe to say that might be the money shot there, folks. Can Blake Payne get himself a world title opportunity here tonight by qualifying for the Elimination Chamber? I guess we'll just have to find out who his opponent is. This is one long entrance. Who is his opponent? Um. Oh no no no. Oh no. Bro, this is like It feels like Blake was replaced with Jackson Wyatt. That's that's what I'm feeling right here. Blake has never said it, but it kind of feels like ever since Blake got injured, Max has signed himself with Jackson Wyatt, and ever since then, it just feels like Blake has been a second thought to uh, his former protege and also tag partner. Who, who is it that's fighting tonight? And oh, Blake, Blake not allowing 
not allowing Jackson Wyatt to have his moment. Blake is going for the kill. I don't, I don't blame him. I do not blame him at all. Into the corner. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Blake already showing what he's learned whilst he's been away. It feels like he's a whole. He, it feels like he has a whole new gimmick to him. Swinging neck breaker there. Now, I'm going to say this now. Jackson Wyatt probably isn't the same after taking, like, what felt like maybe 10, 20 different bumps onto ladders, tables, chairs, all that stuff from Psychosis that Royally Rumbled. Don't forget, this is only two weeks after. I don't necessarily think Jackson Wyatt is still at truly 100%, but big elbow there from Jackson Wyatt. Big boo! You have to consider Blake is a fresh man, Hurricane Rana! It feels like he has a style that suits him now. Oh. Big time German suplex. One. Two. Kick out from Jackson Wyatt. What the hell is he going for now? Blake going for something we've never seen him hit before. Oh. He misses the cartwheel Pele kick though. And now Jackson Wyatt. Big time Uranagi. Looks like he's looking for the wolf bite. Misses Hurricane Rana there from Blake. Max not looking too happy. And a second German suplex. One. Two. The kick out again. Blake. Ooh. DDT. One, two, all but a kick out. Hammerlock DDT. I believe Blake has some sort of name for it, but I don't know what to call it. The pain spike, maybe? Because it's like a spiking DDT. Big strike there from Jackson Wyatt as it looks like Jackson Wyatt trying to get uh, some offense going here. Big time strikes. Oh, but Blake able to stop the momentum. Big chop to the gut. And now the, oh, bare fist strikes. Jesus. Feels like Blake has had just this aggression built up in him ever since Jackson Wyatt, well, not Jackson Wyatt, Jared Dexter took him out about a month ago. Over a month, actually. Blake misses a move. Big boot there from Jackson Wyatt. Out of the ring. See, this is smart. Getting back into the ring now. Blake is controlling the action in this match. Rolling forearms. German suplex, center of the ring, one, two, three. Blake Payne is back. And he has himself a world title opportunity at, the, at lockdown inside the elimination chamber. We have the second Elimination Chamber Qualifier coming up next. But Blake Payne looks ready. He looks ready. He looks ready to be the next World Champion. Can he win? We'll just have to find out. Second Qualifier, and how can you not give an opportunity to this man? The man who never actually brings his television championship out unless he's defending it which I think is pretty smart like you don't want people stealing your title do you? like 
We've seen that happen way too much in wrestling. We don't want more people stealing titles. So Stanley Owens comes out without the television championship. Successfully defended it twice at Royally Rumbled, defeating both Carl Satin and Ken Smith. We're gonna see who he is up against here tonight. The production team have played the music too early. Wait, hang on, whoa, 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 what? Th this isn't, wait a sec, what? Seth Styles, what have you done, my guy? Seth Styles has joined greatness. Plus, Greatness have some new tag belts on them. They are the custom-designed Greatness Tag Team Championships that they will hold for as long as they are the Tag Team Champions. Kind of weird that uh, Seth Styles has aligned himself with greatness. So uh, it's a collision I never expected to see in my wildest dreams. Well, I honestly think this could work wonders for them. You know, Seth Styles has been absolutely shoved to the undercard as of late. So perhaps joining greatness is his way of getting back into that top spot. A bit like an AJ Styles situation, you know? And the fight is on and oh! Knee strike there from Stanley Owens. And you have to think that if Stanley Owens loses to Seth Styles here tonight, there will be a title opportunity for Seth Styles in the future at some point. You have to think that. And oh, big clothesline there from Stanley Owens. Something tells me this is like, this is shades to, I believe, episode one or two of CW season three. We're gonna see just how much these two have changed over the course of season three. Even though it's only been going on for a couple months. Oh! Big time knee strike there from Stanley Owens. And already, you can see the change in aggression. As Stanley Owens is now a lot more aggressive. Whereas Seth Styles is forced to play catch up. And Stanley Owens has just been dominating this match. Big strikes. Seth Styles with the reversal. Misses the strike. Suplex. Oh, and another strike and another strike. Now, big knee. Another one. Russian leg sweep. And I wonder if Greatness are doing this because they know that majority of teams in CEW, they are not two, they are, they are factions. You know, you got the World Class Destruction, which, yeah, it is mainly, oh, big time slam there from Seth Styles, and it looks like the aggression has changed hands ever so slightly, as uh, Stanley Owens is now in a, a bit of a shark tank here, with uh, Greatness watching ringside. But as I was saying, oh wait, Stanley Owens with these combo strikes, we've seen these before. The kicks that cave the chest in. And oh, the, that ch his chest must be sore after that. One punch coming in. This might be it. One punch. Greatness. Have to watch as Seth Styles loses here tonight. Oh, but a kick out from Seth Styles, and this is why this man was the first ever CW World Heavyweight Champion. Oh. 
and an axe kick connects. Ugh. I feel like my mouth gets really, really like it's a mixture of dry and watery, and it's just horrible. Um, during the recording. Oh! Shots into the turnbuckle. That's why I always bring a bottle of water with me to these. Oh! Rolling fireman's carry. Seth Styles has been is beginning to turn this match into his favour. Rock bottom from Stanley Owens. And I mean, after Royally Rumbled, Stanley Owens probably does need a bit of a competitive match. I believe Seth Styles did alright in the uh, Royal Rumble. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if he did horribly. Um... You know, I couldn't necessarily keep tabs on all 20 men in that match. Oh, oh I thought he was going to go for the Seth Tista bomb there. But instead he goes for... Brain Buster! Is he going Seth Tista bomb? Oh! Style Special! Hits the style special. As I believe the moniker of Seth Tista is gone. Seth Styles has found out who he truly is. Big strikes here. Big clubbing blows for Stanley Owens. And Stanley Owens is in trouble. Big time slam. Cover what? Not even a one count. Yo, all of these guys are wearing the same colour. Could you imagine Stanley Owens as well joining greatness right here? One pu Counters the one punch. Seth Styles all went for a back elbow there. Not able to connect. Into the into the corner. Stanley Owens says no to that. Bang smashes his head into the corner. Big shoulder tackle. This match has been a Slugger. Oh, knee strike into the gut. Could we see the first ever television champion walk into the chamber? Will Seth Styles look to potentially be one of the only two time CW World Champions? Oh, cover. Cover. One. Oh, kick out at one. Oh, kick to the gut. Oh, went for the one punch again. Countered. Big clothesline into the corner. <laughs> Seth Styles refusing to give up in this fight. And why would you? You have a chance to prove yourself here against the television champion. Big running knee there. And it looks like. It's like Seth Styles has taken Stanley Owens to his limits here tonight. Big clothesline. And a drop kick busting open Seth Styles. And I believe in previous experiences, this is how Stanley Owens gets here. These combo strikes. Oh, spinning back fist. Clubbing kicks. There's only one. The one punch. And it looks like Stanley Owens is going to the elimination chamber. My God, what a match. Kudos to Seth Styles. I know he hasn't had the best of luck recently but Stanley Owens just too good good to see the Seth special came back though the suck styles of Seth I think his Seth special works better
Oh, come on! It's a world-class destruction! And they're looking to start a fight with the Tag Team Champions! But Greatness are taking them down! As now we have... What should be a really good match here tonight. As we have Tony Taylor taking on Candy Vega. And wait, hang on! Candy Vega not waiting for entrances to finish. Goes straight in with the kendo stick, misses the first time. And there we go, the match is on the way. Now, I would have explained what was going on during the entrances, but I guess I'm going to have to explain what's going to go down after this now. So, basically, whoever wins this goes on to fight Maria Sampson at lockdown, where if they were to beat Maria, it'd be a triple threat CW Mania. Oh, quick, quick cover. Not even a one count, though. Now Candy Vega taking Tony Taylor outside. Oh, to the outside we go. Oh, over the skull. Don't forget, Candy Vega was on an absolute warpath during the Women's Royal Rumble until. Tony Taylor decided, well, you know what? I want to make a name for myself. I want to eliminate Candy Vega from the Rumble. And here we are now. Candy Vega wanted to prove herself. She thinks that if Tony Taylor did not eliminate her, she would have won the Royal Rumble. And you know what? I kind of have to agree. Oh, man, this is the perfect fake out here. As now, Tony with the kendo stick going back outside. This is literally a wild goose chase at this moment. And oh, misses. Oh! Elbow strike. Big forearm shot there. Kendo stick picked up by Tony. Ducks under. Hurricane runner. Oh, big uppercut. And now, all oh, misses one shot. Oh! Just blasting Tony with the kendo stick. Candy Vega picking it back up. And oh! Dishing the punishment back. Here we go. Oh god! Oh! Head smacking on the kendo stick. Pack stunner. You don't have time to be taunting to the crowd when you're up against someone like Candy Vega. No idea what Candy's trying to do here. Maybe trying to coax her to go into the outside big clothesline there. As now, looks like something big's about to go down. A little bit of black magic. The cover. One. Kick out at one. And this match is not over by a long shot.
like you gotta think how much do these women want this match think about it it's a chance to appear at lockdown it is a chance to appear at CW Mania 3 Oh, big forearm again from Tony. Cover! And not even a one count again. Oh. Submission hold. Locked in. Trying to wrench the arm back. Can he Vega able to escape? My throat is hurting. This this show has been insane. Oh. Back suplex. She's using the kendo stick. Just once. Puts it down on the ground. It looks like she's looking for what Blake wanted to hit. Earlier today, Cartwheel Pele kick. Super kick there from Candy Vega. Swinging neck breaker. Oh, wait. Tony, roll up. One, two. Ooh. The Vega Cutter. It takes only one, two, three. I said I wanna be happy, but and it genuinely does only take one. Felt like Tony Taylor was gonna win, but in the end, it only takes one Vega cutter, and Candy Vega is going to lock down. So, uh, the esteemed GM. And owner of CW is here, everybody. Is he in a match? Is he just doing a promo? No one knows anymore. He's pretty much. You know what? Everyone complains that owners and GMs aren't more hands on with their products. Fire it is. Our boy Byronite is uh, constantly churning out you know, good news. And I believe he has got a few words to say tonight. Just about the recent situations following uh, CBW, etc. So, I, I want to personally thank everyone for coming to Royally Rumbled, and just want to say that the road to CW Mania 3 is officially upon us. So, I want to start by addressing a few rumours. One, Brian Asriel technically has not quit, because he has not come to me and delivered me his resignation. Therefore, he is still technically signed. He might be taking a little bit of a reprieve, and you know, that kind of stuff. But he is still signed, and I do expect him to, at some point, return. But, you know what, I want to talk about what happened after the match. Yes, I lost my temper, I attacked him, and, you know, I, too, have suffered some repercussions, you know. But at the same time, my brain told me, I've still got it. I still have what it takes, and this is great. This means I can finally get back into the ring 
after all these years. Well, months, really. So, I just want to say, you know, to everyone who has a match on the road to uh, CW Mania 3, good luck. And you never know, I might challenge someone to a match at CW Mania 3. I don't know. Wait, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is Trevenator doing? So that's it, Byron. You go from being this tough SOB again to being the softy general manager. When are you going to realize being a softy gets you absolutely nowhere? You see, what Brian Azrael did to you before was an example of what happens when you're soft, but what you did to him and Royally Rumbled is what you truly were. He took me out because I wasn't prepared. You know what? I'm cleared. I want a match against him at lockdown. I don't care if it's Hell in a Cell, Steel Cage, I do not care. And I do not care who I have to go through, who I have to beat down, I want that match. And you know what? If you're not going to make it happen, because as we all know, you only make certain matches happen. If you don't make it happen, I am going to make it happen. Just be prepared for the worst. So, let me get this straight. To end the show, Trevenator has basically called out Brian Asriel, and he wants a f he wants a fight at lockdown. 